Remember, the Jews speak ancient Phoenician. There is no Hebrew language. Go look it up. They speak ancient Phoenician. The word Israel in Phoenician means Saturn. The children of Israel, the children of Saturn. There are striking resemblances between the biblical God of the patriarchs and the Canaanite God, El. El is the head of the council of gods. He is said to have a long white beard. He dwells on a mountain top in a tent. His epithets include father of all creatures, bull, king. He's also described as the protector of patriarchs, patriarchal figures, a god of the father of the clan, it says in the text. He guides them, he protects them, he promises them descendants. Many biblical passages depict God exactly this way, as the head of a council of divine beings. He's occasionally described with some of the epithets that are associated with El. He's referred to as the father of all creatures. There are poetic passages in which he is referred to as bull, also certainly as king. And in the patriarchal narratives, God refers to himself as the God of the Father. I am the God of the Father, the same way El is referred to. He guides and protects the patriarchs. He makes promises of progeny to Abraham and his heirs. Um, he also is associated with a mountaintop, Sinai, and gives instructions for the building of a tabernacle, a tent-like structure in which he will dwell. Many personal and place names in the patriarchal narratives are compounds in which one element is El. Yisrael, Yishmael, Beth El. El is the God of the patriarchs. By contrast, after the time of Moses, Israelite names start to be formed using Yah or Yahu as part of the name Yahweh. Elijah in Hebrew is Eliyahu. So you start to have theophorics, names that use the name of a deity, which are using forms of Yahu instead of El. Yahu. Who's God you're worshiping? Get up in the morning slaving for bread, sir, so that every mouth can be fed. Poor, poor me, Miss Rally. Get up in the morning slaving for bread, sir, so that every mouth can be fed. Poor, poor me. Wife and kids and pack up and I leave me Darling, she said I was yours to receive Oh, oh me, this my life Shut them and tear up trousers and No water and I'm like morning and dad talking about the return of the golden age um, alchemy bringing everything back which I've been stating for a long long time um, this isn't hidden knowledge it's all about trying to in their minds correct correct well as I was told by a guy that's involved in some real serious stuff 
and I ain't even sure the dude was from around here. And I mean that in a literal sense. I don't know if he was real or if he was a spirit or what, but all he told me was, is he put his hand up to the sky when we were inside the restaurant, and he said, we don't need any of that meaning they don't, he doesn't need anything of God, okay? Um, that's a very weird story about that guy for another time. But it's, it's, it's starting over and leaving that part of it out, okay? Um, the second one, you can go ahead and read that. Um, there's a particular part in here. This is just comparing... The first one's comparing Adam and Saturn like I told you, this being one. This one is Abraham, another biggie in the, in the Hebrews. Um, the Hebrew, there is no Hebrew language. They speak ancient Phoenician. And so when we go down here, and I've been trying to tell people, this is the key thing. This is why these truthers won't, the real guys like Maxwell and, well, he's hinted to it, but the rest of them, Ike and all them, they won't use the word Saturn. It says, look, the name of the planet Saturn is by the Phoenicians called Israel. The Israelis speak ancient Phoenician, which means they are either the descendants of the Phoenicians or they are the Phoenicians. That's why they, they dodge that freaking word and all of their speeches and all of that crap about the new world and all of this crap. The name of the planet Saturn is by the Phoenicians called Israel. Israel is is Saturn. Okay? It's also Yahoo, the Phoenician uh, Oh, Philo wrote that he called it Yahoo, just like the browser. Later that got changed to Yahweh. All of the stuff's connected. All you gotta do is just trace the dots. Um, it's not as big as mystery as it appears to be. This is why I tell you, all of these guys are equating this to this Saturn thing. Okay, if this was like everyday stuff, I would say, well, maybe they're trying to lead you straight. But the fact that it's, it's so obscure that most people, you know, most people wouldn't even think to look. And you, you, then you learn the symbols and you see crap like this. You know, the seal of Saturn or the seal of Solomon, which is Jewish, you know crystallized dark sky remix you know it, it's not by chance it's just not you know it, it's just not and so you know it's it's really like i told you it's all about his story whatever it is and if it isn't i guarantee you whatever it is has a major hand in the way that you're seeing things so now that you know that the, the word Israel means Saturn in Phoenician, and the Jews speak ancient Phoenician, there is no Hebrew language, it's pretty obvious why they have a hexagon with six points on their flag. It, 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 it's not that big of a mystery when you understand it. It's nice if you have a biblical background because it's the only textbook that we have that's written that gives us any clue. If you can read Sumerian and Babylonian, um, please let me know what you find out. But, I mean, this is really all we've got. So, you know, the, the symbols bear out bear out the story more than the written does. Because the symbols don't lie. They're reoccurring over and over and over again. Stories can change. Things can be interpreted. When you see the same symbol over and over again, yeah, you can only stretch that so far before you got to say, yeah, it means the same thing. So, these are just bits and pieces I'm giving you to look at, to compare. The main thing on this one is Saturn is Israel. And they know that. And that's what all of this is about. That's what all of this crap is about. About them being the chosen. Right then. Okie doke. You keep telling yourself whatever makes yourself feel better.
lineage of the red-headed people, and I don't mean people all over the world with red hair. I'm talking about this specific family bloodline of redheads. Not all redheads, the family line of these redheads going all the way back to King David is why they have divine right over you because they swore allegiance to the imposter that is not the god of this, god of this world but is the imposter of this world watch okay take a look red hair also referred to as titan there's the key word that's the key word titan who is titan titan is one of the sons is chronos who's chronos chronos is saturn okay so the red hair the red hair right is is the mark from the old testament this is the mark the ruling the ruling the ruling power structure is all those with red hair and you in the uk you, i know that you know because i i've looked at them they all got red hair even though princess diana in most of her pictures looks like she's blonde she had red hair so does fergie and all the rest of them that specific bloodline goes all the way back to babylonia the bottom line is is it's this family and they use the red hair as their mark as the titans or as they're also known the trojan warriors for chronos okay that's what all of this is about this is what about all your rights being taken away it's all about these guys that swore allegiance to the imposter that calls himself god that that's what's in the king james bible sorry it's true okay the original guy is not here Okay, this world has been absconded by a fraud. That's why it demands a blood sacrifice. It needs blood, and that's why all things in the Bible are tied to blood. Covenants, murdering, promises, they all are around blood. Why? Because they fucking need it. Okay, so in this picture we see a, we see a woman knighting a man. Without sign, trying to sound chauvinistic. It's, it's the reversal of the way the system was set up. It's about the woman superseding the man as a symbolic figure of the man representing the creator and the woman representing the first in charge, which would have been Lucifer or Satan, that rebelled. And therefore you get the, you get the, you get the Lilith that went against Adam, okay? And this is why you see a woman in power, that there's nothing wrong with women in power. But it's the symbolic, uh, the symbolic story behind it, which, which the delegation of that. And that's why you see that woman in that courtroom as the poster for that show. Because it's them gloating and saying, yeah, see, we're the imposter. We're really the imposter, but we got them fooled into thinking we're telling the truth. This is so perverted and so fucked up. I hope you people are starting to see the pattern that's going on here and why we're being ruled by this class.